All right, let's get ready for this final exam. First up, change 7 pi over 6 from radians to degrees. So for 1, you can remember that um, all the way around the circle is 360 degrees, and all the way around the circle is 2 pi radians. And so we use 360 over 2 pi, or 180 over pi, being a ratio of 1 to 1. And so we can multiply 7 pi over 6 by 180 over pi, because this is just 1. And so when you do that, the radians cross out as if they were a unit. 180 divided by 6 is 30. And so um, then 7 times 30 is 210 degrees. Um, you can also think, okay, 7 pi over 6, I know the over 6s are the 30s, and then we have one more than 6 pi over 6, and so it's 210, um, which would be right here, about. Now, 400 degrees, we can't think in terms of our special triangles, and so we have to just use our 400 degrees times, and we're going to flip over our ratio, pi over 180. And so the way you do this is so that the, degree, the degrees will cancel out, just like you do it in your science classes. And so 400 divided by 180 um, reduces to 20 over 9. And that's sad that I typed that in. So 20 pi over 9, or if you wanted to approximate it, we could actually approximate it as about 6.98 radians. All right, solving a triangle. Um, it's a right triangle, and so I'm going to draw it. And I don't take much time except that it says hypotenuse angle is C, so I'm going to put the right angle is C. And so C17 is across from that. And then it doesn't matter, I'm going to put B and A, and so then B equals 9 is right here. So if I want to solve this now, um, to solve for A, I can use Pythagorean Theorem. Um, and so A squared plus 9 squared equals 17 squared. So A squared equals 17 squared minus 9 squared. So A squared equals 208. So A is approximately the square root of 208, which is 14.4. So this is 14.4 now. And we've got part of it. Now we need to find angle A or B. It doesn't matter which one you find. Let's, um, let's find angle A. And so according to angle A, this is our adjacent side. And this is our hypotenuse. And so I'm going to use cosine to solve for angle A. So the cosine of whatever angle A is, is the adjacent over hypotenuse. Remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent's opposite over adjacent. So the cosine is 9 over 17. We take the inverse cosine now to undo the cosine. inverse cosine of both sides. So angle A, when you do this, you want to make sure you are in degree mode. If not, you will get a radian answer anytime you do sine or cosine um, or tangent. So 58 degrees. And I want to be in degree mode because I want my answer to be in degrees. And then 180 minus our 90 minus our 58 degrees will give me angle B, which is um, going to be 40, 32. And there we have it. Now on to sketching sine and cosine. Remember that sine starts at 0, 
because the y value is 0 at 0 and cosine starts at the peak. Both of them have a period that's usually 2 pi. And so in this case, this pi is stretching it. This is what we call it our b. And because it's with the x, it always does the opposite with our x. So usually our period is 2 pi, but now it's being divided by that pi. It's having the opposite effect. And so our period is now going to be 2. When we graph these, we split our graph up into four parts because you have a peak and a middle and a valley and a middle and a peak and all that, and it just cycles between the two. This negative reflects our graph so that it's going to go down first. And the two is our amplitude. And so we're going to go up to 2 and down to 2. And we're going to... Um, amplitude is that distance from the equilibrium line. And so we're going to go from here because it's a sine. And it's going to go to the valley, back to the middle, to the peak, to the middle. And that'll be one cycle of our graph. It's going to repeat after that. On this one, 2 plus 3 times the sine, this 2 can just as well go on the back, and it can be 3 sine of x minus pi plus 2. It does the same thing. So the 3, this is our amplitude. This minus pi, opposite of what we think, so it's going to shift it to the right pi, and the plus 2 is going to shift it up 2. And so this is our midline. So I'm going to make it shift up to, have our midline here. It's going to go up to 3, up 3 from there. And so the max will be at 5, this will be at 2, this will be at negative 1, that will be the lowest it gets. The period is not affected this time, and so the period is still 2 pi. So I'm going to shift, um, make this 2 pi, pi, and again, Start with the period, cut it in half, which is pi, cut it in half again, pi over 2. And this is always 3 of those, 3 pi over 2. Um, because we're shifting it to the right pi, our graph is going to start right here. Usually sine starts in the middle, which is the equilibrium line, and now we're shifting it to the right. So I'm going to shift my lines off to the right as well, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. This will be 1 pi over 2. 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 2. And so it's not going to repeat until two pi, uh, 3 pi, which is 2 pi after pi. So it's a sine graph, so it's going to go from the equilibrium up to the peak, back to the middle, down to the valley, and back up to the top. And so and then we, we could repeat the pattern. This is usually what we're used to seeing but we could repeat the pattern going backwards as well. And it would look like that. that. Alright, and that's graphing sine and cosine. Um, Alright, so if sine of theta is negative 3 fifths, value of the angle, and this is the opposite side and the hypotenuse side, or in terms of, in a triangle, when you always make the angle with the x, the opposite is going to be the y, and the adjacent will always be the x. And so this is what we did a lot. Um, and so it's telling us it's in quadrant 4. And so remember how it's 1, 2, 3, 4, just numbered the same way that we measure angles, starting from the x, going all the way around. So, this has got to be the opposite side, 3, and this has got to be the hypotenuse, 5. Uh, remember, we always make our angle with the x-axis. Um, and so that would make this side, um, and sorry, this y has to be negative. 
And so we can find that side by saying x squared plus negative 3 squared equals 5 squared. Or you can recognize it as a 3, 4, 5 triangle, um, making x equal 4. So then the cosine of our angle is going to equal 4 over 5, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Our tangent of our angle is going to equal the opposite over the adjacent, negative 3 over 4. Um, and there's your cosine and your tangent. It's all based on can I draw the triangle based on this information. Now, had they not given us quadrant 4, tan sine is also negative over here, and so you have to weed that one out. All right, a tree casts a shadow of 100 feet. So we've got a tree. Um, 100 foot shadow. Shadows go on the ground. Angle of elevation from the end of the shadow to the top of the tree. And so getting your picture down is half the battle. We want to know how tall is the tree. So I'm going to call it H. Assuming the tree standing up straight, we have the opposite and the adjacent. So I'm going to use tangent of that angle 47 degrees is equal to opposite H over 100 and let's multiply that by a hundred. Multiply by a hundred. So a hundred times the tangent of 47 equals h. Making sure you're in degree mode still. A um, hundred times the tangent of 47. So the height has to be 107.2 feet. So we got a, ourselves a tall tree. Um, identify the amplitude and the period of the graph of four, uh, y equals 4 cosine of x. This 4 is being multiplied by the cosine of x. And so that is what stretches it out. And so our amplitude is 4. The period of every sine and cosine graph, it repeats every 2 pi. And because there's nothing affecting it here, it's just 2 pi. If there was a number in front of x, our b goes right here. It would be 2 pi divided by b. But there's not. Um, all right. If point p, negative point 0.4, point 0.3 is located on the unit circle, tell what sine, cosine, and tangent are. Now, um, this looks strikingly similar to... 6. This unfortunately is not actually on the unit circle, and I'll show you why. But if you go negative 0.4 and 0.3, we get 0.4 squared, or negative 0.4 squared if you want, plus 0.3 squared. Remember, it's a right triangle that we always make with the x equals... Um, if you want r squared or let's say r. So 0.4 squared plus 0.3 squared. Um, and so that's 0.25. And so r is going to be 0 0.5. 3, 4, 5 triangle again. Um, and so sine, if it was on the unit circle, then r would be 1, and sine would be opposite, and sorry, our angle is always made with the x-axis, so I'm going to put my theta here. Um, sine would be the 0.3 opposite over 1 if it was on the unit circle. In this case, it's going to be 0.3 over 0.5, which will be 3 fifths. Cosine is negative 0.4 over 0.5, which is 4 fifths. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, 0.3 over negative 0.4, or negative 3 fourths. And actually, my 
cosine is also negative, so I'm going to leave it like that. Find one positive and one negative coterminal angle to 100 degrees. And so coterminal angles are ones that share an ending point. This is 100 degrees. And so I'm going to do 100 degrees, and I'm going to add one revolution to it. So I'll get 460 degrees. And I could do 100 degrees, and I could subtract 360 from it. And I would get negative 230. Sorry, <laughs> scratch that. 240 degrees. I can't think today. Negative 260. All right, so there we have it. And so this is one positive coterminal angle and one negative. Um, the positive one goes around once and then ends up in the same spot. The negative one goes around this way, 180 plus another 80. And that's trigonometry as a recap.